Fuckland, this is the time of the year where all the two and two teams, the three and one, the one and three teams, they're all deciding how they're going to move forward. Waiver wires are extremely important. We're going to tell you who to pick up, who to stash for upcoming weeks, who to play this week. Plus, we have our quarterbacks and defensive streamers of the week. Check it out on today's episode. There's a plane. Hey, Foot Clan, we're heading into week five. This is the time when quitters quit oh. and winners get better. If you want to get better, check out our listener community at jointhefoot.com. If you support this show there, you get access to an extra weekly episode where we answer your questions, the full featured start sit tool, our flex rankings, my personal favorite, the consistency charts, and so much more. Support this show and check it out at jointhefoot.com. Dot com. And Foot Clan, make sure you check out our studio sponsor, Pristine Auction, the absolute best sports memorabilia website in the known universe. All my collectible sports gear, all my signed jerseys, signed helmets, full-size helmets, mini helmets, things from entertainment, just incredible collectible items. They've got anything you possibly want in hundreds of new auctions every single day. Pristine Auction, use the code BALLERS when you sign up, get five bucks towards your first purchase. P-R-I-S-T-I-N-E auction.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Another day, another week of fantasy football. Excited to be with you. The best. Andy, Mike, and Jason, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Back with you Tuesday, October 1st. We are into October. It's Halloween month. That yeah, No, I get it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on the way. Jokes are always best when you explain them. That's what Correct. I've been Yeah, yeah. No, the told. funnier. Funnier that way. I'm still not tracking. <laughs> okay. So here's the deal. In about 30 days. Uh, that's true in exactly, even exactly 30 days. Exactly. About both are true. Welcome in. We had a Monday night football game last night or something like it. We had the Steelers Bengals. We'll talk about that. Today's the waiver show. I teased on Twitter. I have a favorite pickup that nobody expects. And I, I, I saw that. Yeah. I went and I looked. I saw who it was. Ironically, it was someone that I was uh, – Brooks can attest to this. I talked about picking up last week and playing because I had two last-minute injuries in our double flex. I like it, but he certainly wouldn't be my number one. He's not – he's in that category for me. There are a couple players that I think are mostly owned that sure. if they're not, I think win the prize over this guy. But I saw hundreds of replies to my tees. And no one got it, which was Ooh. funny. I, I didn't see anybody get it. So we'll bring him up. And uh, I will say, uh, I will confirm, Jason has mentioned him before. The reason he's my favorite has to do with a couple of things that have taken place. But that's at the wide receiver position. So I think there are a lot of very interesting things to talk about today. We'll get into the waivers. We have full stream ahead, which is our quarterback streaming picks for week five. We have defense versus offense, our defensive streaming picks for the upcoming week. We're finally at the point in the season where you have, you know, four games in the books and you, oh, okay, Carolina. Wow, they can put pressure on the quarterback. We know that now. San Francisco, this defense, I, obviously yep. you missed a week, but they're looking okay. And and uh, obviously the Steelers look like a very improved defense over the last two weeks as well. A little bit of a fantasy football PSA to start the show. Well, I guess let me mention this first of all because I my Twitter it could not be more filled. <laughs> the bet we had yesterday, <laughs> it really took the world by storm, Mike. Now, the result was that I lost the bet. What I didn't know is that it was almost impossible to win the bet when we made it. Now, I, and that's and, on me. And I knew. You did know. <laughs> You were more confident than a person could ever be. If you haven't listened to yesterday's episode, <laughs> the actual bet was this. Uh, they were talking about flying on drones and hanging on 
And uh, so Andy thought he could hang on to a bar for a... I could a, free hang. Just a, for, a, for a, a, a pretty long period of time. Five minutes. And Mike <laughs> said, I, if you do that, I will give you $100. It was a one-way bet. We went, we filmed it. You could see it on YouTube. But here's the thing. You actually are great yes. at hanging from a bar. Like, there's all these videos out there talking about, like, you'll get $100 if you can hang for one minute or for 100 seconds, and nobody gets those. You you, you crushed that. I got over two minutes. That's fantastic. Apparently, I could be touring carnivals winning $100 here and $100 there. Honestly, I don't know why we are here. <laughs> And not not trying to find these carnivals. That's what I actually got more on Twitter. I had people sending me contests uh, that they find all over the country where people are trying to do this. I just made the wrong bet. Had I had any context for this, I mean, I just believed. Now, part of my contention was that if your life's on the line, you can go a little farther. And we yes. saw videos of a person who was on a hang glider that didn't get strapped in. They had I, to hang on for a little while. I do not recommend you watching it. That was terrifying. But so I, I feel like I had a good showing, a horrible loss in the bet, and you can see that at youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Uh, it was it was fun. It was a good time. All right, here's the PSA that I have. And Jason, you Mike, you guys can can add to it. But the big message here heading into week five is don't panic. Don't give up. If you're 0 and four, if you're one and three, I made the comment years ago. Anything that has happened can happen in reverse. You can just as easily go 4-0 over the next four weeks and be right in the thick of it. And what happens is fantasy owners, other fantasy owners in your league that are 1-3 and three and 0-4, and start throwing in the towel. Yes, every single year. That's the, that's the thing. There's easy wins coming for you if you're not the quitter. If you're the quitter, you're giving easy wins to, to someone else. But those come. And also keep in mind, you've played teams that have beat you. you. There's a good chance that you've played good teams, which means you're about to play the bad teams. There's always, you know, ha the whole league can't be good. Right. That's just because of the way that fantasy football works. The way that life works. Right. There's a balance. Exactly. <laughs> when we say this, it almost sounds like too obvious. But it's important because... You're blinded by the pain of your defeats yes. right now. Yes. Don't tilt trade. Don't give up. All you got to do is make the playoffs, and you can win the championship. All right, so big takeaway from last night's game. That's our quick question for the day. The Steelers spanked the Bengals. The Bengals are 0-4. Here's I, my – go ahead, Jay. I'm getting milked. That's that's my takeaway. <laughs> don't. Now, context <laughs> Can here. we just get that quote, broke separately? <laughs> So here's I'm getting the thing. Our, our I manager, have nipples, Greg. Yeah, <laughs> not like that. But we do water bets, and our manager Damon was big into Amari Cooper this year. Uh, the Foot Clan knows I am. I was giant into Juju Smith-Schuster. I think he was going to have a a monster year this year, and I was so sure he was going to beat Amari Cooper that we changed our water our water bet into a milk bet. Disgusting, disgusting, awful. But I'm not going to be wearing the milk. He is, except. Big Ben Roethlisberger is out for the year after a game, and it's not looking good for Juju. Juju looked good. Juju was open 25 yards down the field. That's fine. He's he's doing great. But they don't throw the ball but two feet because I hear that three feet is a yard, and they're like, yeah. I don't want that. And Mason Rudolph is not throwing the ball down the field, but once or twice, I believe two times, he has thrown the ball over 10 yards both of his last two starts. Mason Rudolph was 16 for 16 when targeting his running backs in this game, which was also all of the time he threw the ball, minus yet another almost instant replay, Deontay Johnson touchdown, yeah. as he had last week. Yeah, whatever open. whatever play call that is, let's keep doing it, Pittsburgh, because it works every time. Do it, Juju, though. <laughs> Here, here's what I'm going to say. Now, it, it was a bounce-back week for some players that we've liked. James Conner. He's been handed a, a, a difficult situation with, with Big Ben being out as well. Uh, Chris Carson, uh, Robert Woods. These were big bounce-back weeks, big finishes. Carson had a great week. Connor had a great week. My takeaway from last night's game is genuinely, and he was my start of the week, so I want you to understand that in biases and things like that. I believe that you should sell James Connor right here, right now, as fast as humanly possible. He had equal amount of touches as Jalen Samuels, you're not facing the Bengals every week. The Bengals are the second worst right. team in football when it comes to stopping the running back position. They had no ability to adjust to the short passing game and these 
these underneath routes for the running back, they looked atrocious. And I don't think you're going to have an easy road forward for James Conner. He had 10 rushing attempts in a game that they won by three touchdowns. He also got banged up, came back in. I'm not saying he's a bad player. I'm not saying that you have to sell him. I think you would you should sell him. And if I want, you could capitalize on the value of a of a of an RB one. Yes. If you can sell the narrative of here he is, here's the guy that I here's the guy that you expected coming into the year. Sell that narrative. And I will say this, and it pains me to say it, but you have to stay water in this league or in, in fantasy. I will throw Chris Carson into that category. If you want to sell Chris Carson, yeah. he's not going to play Arizona every week, and he's not going to get whatever it was, 85% of the rushing attempts every week. He's not going to have Penny on inactive every week. Yes. So if you – again, it's not a must-sell. It's saying this is the time of year where you can go try to take advantage of a situation. If you are a winning team, go look at players that are going into the buy. There are different ways to acquire players strategically – and if you are a winning team with a nice record and you can go acquire a player in the buy and give another team somebody that can play this week, there are different ways to do it. And and you can also take advantage of someone being passed to buy. If you put James Conner plus someone, you know, a, a, a decent wide receiver that's kind of on your bench or something, and you can convert that to Lev Bell, who's passed his buy, you're stealing right. a week. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. And, it, and it's all about leverage, like Andy was talking about, where carry on Johnson – his workload has has shot through the roof, and I expect it to stay that way. Carryon Johnson's on a bye week right now. Perhaps nope. perhaps the team that has Carryon Johnson could really use James Conner this week, who just had eight targets and eighty three receiving yards and a passing or receiving touchdown. Maybe they're into Conner, and you can say, well, let's 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 do a little Swapsky here. I'll absorb the bye week of Carryon Johnson. So would like, you that's both a, that's do that trade straight sell. up? Absolutely. I really? would rather have carry on straight up. For Even Connor. though you're losing a week outright, hundred percent. I mean, yeah. Context of your team, but if I'm sure. if I'm a winning team, heck yes, I would do that. Yeah, trade. if you're one and three, you can't do that. The workload for carry on Johnson from weeks one and two, when C.J. Anderson was on that team, to weeks three and four, it's been an astronomical difference. Yeah, and he's had f I think it was five goal line carries in the last two weeks. Mind you, he made a little mistake, ski. <laughs> <laughs> but he, but but yes, carry on in the workload, the guarantee. Jalen Samuels is going to be involved. That's another thing that Yeah, yeah we'll talk he, about that on the waiver wire show. He has to play quarterback. Goodness. How much the look. Is that you you haven't given your takeaway, Mike. Here, <laughs> here we go. We're we're we fully support Mason Rudolph. We are behind him. He can lead this team. Yeah, we're gonna need our running back to play, to come <laughs> in here and play quarterback for a whole bunch of snaps. There's a lot of "Quote unquote," taking the pressure off of Mason Rudolph that was created, and I give them a lot of credit. <laughs> the best way to take pressure off, don't let him touch the ball. Yes, yes, impossible to throw an interception in that case. <laughs> Why does he throw it downfield in preseason? Like well, he, preseason, I I know the defenses are easier. That's obvious. But I'm just saying, like in college, who's a down downfield thrower in preseason, he he airs the ball it's, out. It's not about Mason Rudolph. It's about Mason Rudolph in the game plan. And the game plan was minimize mistakes because you didn't – the only way you're losing to Cincinnati last night was to make a bunch of mistakes, sure. which I was counting on. So he's not given – I don't think he's given free reign to do it. I don't know if, how comfortable they are with him doing it. He took his one shot to Deontay Johnson. It was, it was a good play. Did it – back-to-back weeks, one, right. one deep shot, it, it hit. James Washington is not a thing. No. Nope. If, if we want to make that announcement, one target, no catches, yep. not a thing. Follow us on Twitter, at the FF Ballers. You can go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. We've got articles, the Start Sit tool. Jason mentioned all the jointhefoot.com community perks, the consistency charts, flex rankings, premium projections. Check all that out, thefantasyfootballers.com and jointhefoot.com. A reminder, there is a giveaway right now. We're giving away a signed Saquon Barkley jersey from Pristine Auction. You can enter that contest at footclangiveaway.com. It's free to enter. Uh, I don't think we have anything else to add to last night's game. Let's well, the, 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 the last thing I will add is stream your defenses against the Bengals. Oh, yeah. If at all possible. Well, you can't do it this week. Well, yes. I, because I know. they play the Arizona Cardinals. Right. And That's why I said if at all possible. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Well, someone has to win that game. Probably. That's an excellent point. Tell possible. that to Arizona week one. But, well, much like the Pittsburgh-Cincinnati game, Someone had to win. As an Arizona Cardinals fan, it's sad that I know that we're going to lose in Cincinnati. Oh no. oh, no. Moving on. New 
news and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. I almost put a poll up on Twitter. Maybe I'll do that today about, you know, what situation are you least comfortable in? And I guess the answer is Cincinnati because you don't have a potential franchise quarterback on your team the way Arizona does. But talk about similar situations. Rookie head coaches, rookie offensive minds, not given an opportunity by any stretch of the imagination by these defenses. The, uh, and, the offensive mean, lines are yeah. trash. And both of them, I mean, you look at the storyline of, of even, you know, David Johnson and Joe Mixon. Thankfully, David Johnson is getting much more extensive passing game work. But both of those running backs are being stifled by offensive line play and bad offensive play and bad game scripts. Cardinals still have not snapped the ball with a lead this year. Mind you, the Impressive. Patriots have never snapped the ball with a deficit. So, yeah, different situation. All right, Devontae Adams, unlikely to play on Sunday against the Cowboys, according to Adam Schefter. We'll talk about options in the waiver wire part, but Devontae Adams' owners, I'm sorry. He was, he was playing a little too well. He, yeah. Take this news of unlikely to play as he is not playing this Correct. week. I mean, as, he's out. And and they they got good news on the toe. I don't think he needs any kind of surgery or prolonged absence. But this is an injury that is usually at least a, a few weeks. So he's not playing this week for sure. All right, Jerry Jones says he won't rule out Michael Gallup for week five. I don't think that means Gallup is going to be there. Thanks, Jerry, the owner of team. Yeah, yeah, he's not going to rule out Michael Gallup, Mike. <laughs> because the manager will rule him out. Another player dealing with an injury that has some waiver wire implications, Marlon Mack, the ankle injury. He'll be monitored throughout the week. Frank Reich said that he was not medically ruled out of the game. However, they face the Kansas City Chiefs this week. The game script lends itself towards Naeem Hines regardless of Marlon Mack's health. So, it could be one of those weeks where Naeem Hines is pretty sneaky for double-digit fantasy points. It's really tough because Kansas City Chiefs are giving up pretty much the most yards per carry to the running back on the ground. It is a perfect matchup for the beginning part of the game for Marlon Mack, and that's how you slow the Chiefs' offense down is by running the ball. So we've seen a couple, you know, carry on and, and uh, a couple other backs this season have success, uh, Mark Ingram, uh, against – the Chiefs, so um, yeah, monitor the practice. I'm not terrified of them getting down by a bunch and then it being Naeem Hines, uh, but it is it is a possible outcome. I just think if Mac is out there, he's going to be involved. Josh Allen remains in the concussion protocol. It could be Matt Barkley season in Buffalo. Uh, that's unfortunate. The Bills are on buy in week six, so following this week. So if Allen missed, he would get two weeks off with the concussion situation. This is just something we cannot – no, on this on Tuesday. He also plays the Titans. He does this week in so, Tennessee. So it's not a situation where you're really wanting to play Josh Allen as a fantasy owner, right? It, so with that and the bye week next week, Josh Allen. If you have to drop him, I think you can. All right, and keep an eye on Tevin Coleman, Sam Darnold, whether they return to practice this week or not. News and notes is always brought to you by the Sleeper app. Get it now. Get the latest fantasy football news. It's completely free. I think I think we should pause, Mike. I think it's important that we pause. And we thank today's sponsor, and that's Quip. Quip. You can simplify your morning and evening with an electric toothbrush from Quip. Now, Quip sponsored the show over the last few years. Mike, you... I love it. When, you've look, been, when the plaque comes along, you must quip it. Quip it good. Here's the thing. I lost my quip. What? I did. I lost my quip. What an idiot. I bought a new quip this past <laughs> week out of pocket. Didn't right. even ask for one. Just bought it because it's too invaluable and the routine. I bought one of the metal uh the metal handles. Oh yeah, they're nice. I like I like that grip, you know what I mean? Like that bar I hung from for 2 minutes. <laughs> Sturdy. Like my grip. <laughs> <laughs> time, time, Grip it and quip it. Time Sonic Vibrations offer an effective clean that's gentle on your sensitive gums in just two minutes twice a day. My favorite thing, they send you a new brush head every three months for five bucks. So I don't have to think about buying new ones or worrying about it. It just shows up. I hook it up. No big deal. I quip it, Mike. Quip it good. That's why I love my quip and it's the perfect, uh, it's perfect for getting back into a routine with your teeth. 
Starts at 25 bucks. You can go to getquip.com slash footballers right now. You can get your first refill pack for free. Uh, that's the deal at getquip.com slash footballers, G-E-T-Q-U-I-P.com slash footballers. Foot Clan, we want to thank SeatGeek for sponsoring today's show. If you're trying to get tickets to live events from sports, music, comedy, SeatGeek has the tickets. It you got to geek it, Mike. Oh, you got to seat geek it. Look, we should have had some tickets on SeatGeek to the, the free hang competition. I could have, I, you know, if I had bet the Foot Clan, I would have made some money you, on that you thing. You certainly would have. <laughs> but back to Seat Gig, where you can get tickets. Look, they they rate each deal on a scale of one to ten. There's an interactive seat map. Green dots. Green means good. Red dots. They're overpriced. Maybe you go get those green dots and get a good value on Seat Geek. There's over fifty thousand five star reviews. We all have the Seat Geek app on our phone. We have all used it. We've all used it multiple times. It's extremely easy to get the tickets you want. The tickets you need. SeatGeek will even give you 10 bucks off your first SeatGeek purchase. All you need to do is use our promo code. Download the SeatGeek app today. Use the promo code BALLERS for $10 off your first purchase. That's promo code BALLERS for 10 bucks off your first purchase. Put me in, coach. All right, it's waiver time. Bye weeks. Hey, returning from by the 49ers and Jets. George Kittle, you don't have to don't have to worry about a bye week for George Kittle here on out. But the Lions, the Dolphins, they're on bye. And then next week, week six, we start getting the bigger bye weeks, four teams next week. But this week, no carry on. And then all of those Dolphins you've been starting, I'm sorry, you're going to have to bench them. Yeah. Well, mm. in fairness, that means that there's no truly – epic streaming defenses well the Patriots still are but <laughs> yeah. you know usually it's been the the cheat code of start your defense against the Dolphins too bad all right I, I just got a text live on the show from uh, Brad Ziegler former MLB reliever sure a friend of the show that does some work with the athletic he says he's willing to bet me that I could not hang for longer than 60 seconds clearly he has not seen the video who take the bet yeah deal <laughs> He's got that reliever money, that MLB reliever money. Dude, get, get him $5 million. Bet him and then send him a link to the video. I'm offering him a $20,000 bet. We'll see how that goes <laughs> now that I know the outcome. <laughs> All right, wide receivers on the waiver wire. Yeah, he asked, did you already do this? <laughs> <laughs> All right, hey, this is the time. We'll try to give you some context with our own team's because it matters, right? You do something different on the waiver wire at 0 and 4, 1 and 3 than you might do at 4 and 0 and 4 and 1. You might not, you know, at 4 and 0, I'm probably conserving some fab for the emergency situations. I'm not necessarily going out there and grabbing somebody I'm not going to start or I'm going to put on my bench. Do you agree with that? I completely agree. This is not a week that has a has like the the super high value player like Wayne Gallman last week where you had to bid up, you wanted to burn your priority. There's no one of that value this is just these are players that you're putting on your bench you're padding up that depth you're getting ready for these bye weeks but here are the probably owned but worth checking on names philip dorsett yeah he's 60 percent owned he had nine targets this past week now he didn't do anything buffalo, so maybe that's why he'll end up back on the waiver wire it was against the buffalo defense but the three games upcoming for Dorsett, Washington, the New York Giants, and the New York Jets. All juicy. Absolutely. Yeah, if, if you need a guy that you can actually, not like a stash, but you can plug him in your lineup and get points, Dorsett is, is that. Marquez Valdez-Scantling. Also, very important. If you don't have Devontae Adams, if Adams isn't out there for the Packers, you've got an opportunity here against Dallas for MVS. I would say Allison as well is in that category, but MVS yes. is, is more heavily owned. Might not be available in your league. Last week in week four, MVS had 86% of snaps. Allison was 79%. I would imagine both of these guys are out there for every meaningful offensive snap, barring injury, going in against Dallas. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, at wide receiver, Geronimo would be my number one waiver wire pickup of the week because he is widely available. Uh, over 70% of leagues, Geronimo Allison is there. You saw a big uptick uh, this last week. And I, I think that, 
there is there is familiarity with Aaron Rodgers that MVS does not yet have. And if you're taking away the number one option in Devontae Adams, you have to have a go-to guy. And I don't think that that's I, – I still think MVS is, is good. I would pick him up. If he's out there, I'd start him if I had him. But to me at wide receiver, my number one pickup would be Geronimo. Oh, is he? Yes. Okay. All right. That makes sense. And he's 24% on. So let's start there in the main guys. Uh, Geronimo Allison – Great opportunity with Devontae Adams out. I guess you're looking at him and saying you believe the target volume will be maybe higher for him than MVS. Yes. And you're more interested in – obviously, 24% owned, he's available in a lot of leagues. Right. I mean, he he just I – be, I believe he becomes the de facto 1A or 1B, and that's good enough uh, certainly for – you know. The, and, and you look, I expect Devontae Adams to miss a couple of weeks. So you've got the Dallas Cowboys. That could be a high-scoring game. The Detroit Lions, Oakland Raiders. I think that those are matchups you could actually start Geronimo. Now, I will, I will mention my favorite pickup of the week right now. And the reason why he's my favorite is it's not just the potential outcome. Like, Allison, you made a very compelling case. He can be valuable. MBS, Dorsett, I think they take the cake, but aren't likely available. The reason I like this guy is because I think you're going to pay nothing for him. And sure. because of that, and because I don't look at these other players in the main waiver wire wide receiver pickup as guarantees, I don't want to pay for a player that's right on the fence with this guy, and it's out in tape. Wide receiver for the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, you may want to steer clear of the Bengals. I understand that. No, 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 no. But, they play Arizona. But they play Arizona this week. That's variable one. Variable two is John Ross was yeah. injured at the end of last night's game. We don't know anything else about it, but he walked off with a, a noodle arm. And he's, he's It's very had, likely that he's out. Yeah, he's had shoulder troubles frequently in his life. Tate was targeted six times last night, had four catches for fifty yards. He's six foot five. He faces Arizona at home, and Cincinnati throws the ball. So I actually love Tate this week. Now you we we we're gonna mention Golden Tate too, but Auden Tate has a great opportunity against a terrible defense. If you need a one-week flex, a one-week rental, right? It, yes, it is my one sneaky pickup of the week. Yeah, I, I almost picked him up for this game. Like I said uh, against the Steelers, you had him playing eighty-eight percent of the snaps two weeks ago, over ninety percent this week. Two weeks ago, he had ten targets for six receptions. That was against Buffalo. He's a big, giant beast of a man. You know what he reminds me of? A tight end. That means the Cardinals are not going to guard him. <laughs> if they think he's a tight end running right. routes, they will leave him alone. 100%. Man, let's talk about another Golden Tate. Or, I mean, another Tate. <laughs> <laughs> sure. This one's golden. Uh, what do you think? 50% owned. Golden Tate's out there on the waiver wire. Sterling Shepard has been great. So, are you as excited about Tate as you were a couple weeks ago to no. pick him up against Minnesota, New England? That's why. Mm. Yeah, I, mean, I don't. I don't see a lot of opportunity here for Tate to be a plug and play week one option. I would be adding him because yes, we'll see what happens. But I would be adding him on my bench, which probably means I'm not spending a bunch to get him. I absolutely think he is an add. He although let let's say you're one of these own four teams. He's one in three teams that you need someone this week. Golden Tate unfortunately probably has to drop on your priority list because Minnesota and then the Patriots next week. Like, uh, even though Daniel Jones is is playing pretty well for a rookie, I can't imagine you're starting Golden Tate with any level of confidence against no, these you, two teams. You don't have a clue how he's going to be used. You don't know if he's going to be the number one, number two, number three target behind Shepard and Evan Ingram. I mean, he hasn't had the on field experience through these last two weeks with Daniel Jones, and now two terrible matchups. Sure, should you grab him if you've got a deep bench and you've got the ability? You could do that if you're in a full PPR, sure. But I'm if you need a win, if you need a guy to play, I don't think Golden Tate is your guy. I would rather go out even in a somewhat minus matchup and grab Cortland Sutton, who's still available. He would be my top in half pickup. of leagues out there. He's the wide receiver fifteen. He's been doing great things, and they have not had uh, an easy slate of matchups so far this year. So is he? You said he would be your top pickup. Yeah, right? he's not nearly as available, but about half a leagues, he's there. He's the wide receiver fifteen on the season, and we like to give Joe Flacco tons and tons of crap, rightly so, 
for things that he does. But right now, Joe Flacco is sustaining two high-level fantasy wide receivers in Cortland Sutton and Emmanuel Sanders. Like we are, we're four weeks in. Like we got to start adjusting our view. Maybe Joe Flacco is going to be able to sustain these guys moving forward. As Kate, Case Keenum was last year, right? And and he gets Cortland Sutton gets the Chargers, which that's not my favorite matchup. However, Manny Sanders should be the one who to draw the shadow coverage from Casey Hayward. It's it's a strange thing because so Sanders is the wide receiver thirteen on the on the year. Sutton is wide receiver fifteen. Sutton, you just look at the consistency charts. He was twenty second in week one. 62nd, then 32nd, and then 6th this past week. So it was on the heels of this Jacksonville matchup. It just goes to show, with him being wide receiver 15, I, I don't want to take anything away from Sutton having a good start, but you really you were happy with him two of the four starts. But it just shows what's... Three. three like you, you're, playing, you're playing Cortland Sutton as a wide receiver. Oh, okay. Three. Sure, sure. Two of, the, two of the four, right? Three of the four. I would say three of the four. Three of the four. Thirty Finishing 32nd? Yeah, as a wide receiver three, you're happy with that. Because okay. you're not starting him, at, like Mike's saying, you weren't starting him as a one or two. Going, man, I'm going to get okay. some Devontae Adams numbers. He, did, he his, certainly his, didn't kill you that week. Right. You're right. And his bad week was Chicago. But it just shows you what's going on with some of these top-tier options. I mean, let me illustrate this for you. DeAndre Hopkins was number five in week one. Go buy DeAndre Hopkins. He's 57, 41, 50 over the last three weeks. Who? he's making Sammy Watkins – Look good. I mean, it's the same story with Sammy. It's the yeah. same story with Beckham. Uh, Beckham. Yep. There, there are a handful of these guys. And if you look, even the top five at the position on the on the year, okay, Keenan, he's been consistent. He's safe, yes. Godwin, pretty consistent, but had a bomb week. Cooper Cup's been balling out the last three weeks. I would say he's very consistent. But Mike Evans, he's split, right? He had two bad weeks, mm -hmm. two good weeks. You know, even Julio Jones has had two weeks in the 30s. You're not starting your wide receiver one to get you in the 30s every week. So consistency-wise, it's actually been like Michael Thomas is the only wide receiver in the top 10 that has finished in the top 24 every week. That's yeah, it. Been rough. Nobody, else, nobody else has done it. So I think maybe that speaks high, higher of Cortland Sutton in the fact that every player is going to have an up and down, but you've seen a pretty good target share for him. I don't blame you long term making him your your favorite pickup. What do you do with Cole Beasley? He's been consistently targeted. Last week, seven for seventy five on thirteen targets. He seems very safe for PPR formats as a wide receiver three. Yeah, I, I think that he is. I mean, he's a, he's a slot wide receiver. He's one of Josh Allen's favorite go to guys. Double digit targets the past two weeks. Takes on Tennessee and then gets the bye week. So I don't know how excited I am to pick him up right now. Because he's just he's going to be right back on the wave. Yeah, of there's wire. better weekly starts. So just this wait, isn't a good match. Wait for the, the bye week, week to pass because then he gets Miami, and then Cole Beasley will be a good start. What are you doing with AJ Brown? I I mentioned I'm yesterday on the show. Someone else step on the landmine. So you're with me on that. Yeah, I'm not interested in AJ Brown and Corey Davis. You know he's barely AJ Brown's fifty percent snap count right now yes. on the season. They have a tough matchup against Buffalo this week. Then they go to Denver. Then the Chargers. AJ Brown feels like the kind of player I'm going to pick up. I'm going to try to put him in my lineup. He's going to goose me. I'm going to drop him. He's going to blow up on the waiver wire, and we're going to play that game all year. He's he's the type of player I'm not going to pick up. I mean, he's just it's a low target volume offense. He's a low target player. He's talented. He'll maybe have a future, but I just don't want to rely on Marcus Mariota. What do you do with Deontay Johnson, Jason? Deontay Johnson's only 5% owned right now. Pittsburgh wide receiver, 6 for 77 and a touchdown on 6 targets. He has Baltimore this week, but fantasy owners should realize Baltimore, the matchup against Baltimore doesn't mean what it's meant in the past. I mean, ba the Baltimore defense. has been beaten up this They've year. They've lost a lot of pieces over this last offseason. If I have to pick between those two rookie wide receivers, A.J. Brown and Deontay Johnson, I'm taking... Deontay Johnson, he's looked good two weeks in a row. He, uh, you know, I, I think, I still believe that Mason Rudolph, as the season goes along, gets more opened up, not less. I don't know that they're going to do that with Marcus Mariota. We know what he is. They want him to manage the game. So, you know, I, I would I would lean Deontay Johnson. Six targets, six receptions, doing, doing his job. That's yep. something that uh, Dante Moncrief once had a dream about, getting six targets and then catching all six of them. Oh, you can keep dreaming, Dante. Well, and he would have been – Dante Moncrief would be happy catching him and then fumbling them. He would be fine with that. Uh, like in Deontay, fairness, like Deontay, Deontay Johnson, Johnson did that once. That, yeah. that was the point. 
All right, Indianapolis, if they miss, if Paris Campbell's out, if T.Y. Hilton misses another week, you know, it, it wasn't worth a shot on pretty much anybody this week. Um, Zach Pascal had four for 72 on seven targets. Prior to this game, he was not getting the snap count that, you know, Deion Kane was getting, uh, Chester Rogers. But this it's, it just feels like a crapshoot. They're going to piece it together with tight ends and middling wide receivers in the absence of T.Y. Hilton. If T.Y. Hilton is gone this week against Kansas City, you could take a shot on someone like Paris Campbell to just break one long. But Would, you, would you play Ebron in the flex over any of those wide receiver options if you're picking somebody, like you said, taking a shot? Of any of the Colts guys? Yeah. yeah. Versus yeah. playing Pascal or Kane or Rodgers. Or, uh, I would play Ebron. Yeah, I think I would play Ebron. Anybody else do you want to mention a wide receiver before we start talking running back waivers? Just for Brooks' sake, I'll mention Dante Pettis again. He's off of bye. I will say this. I did pick him up. I was looking at the, the injuries that happened the first three weeks. There were a couple different things uh, that, that didn't come out. Shanahan was talking him up. So we'll see. And uh, Andy's shaking his head no. I'm still a believer of the talent. I just thought we did this show for like all the Foot Clan out there, not just for Brooks. That's why I... I didn't know it was all about Brooks stashing the Dante Pettis. The Foot Clan loves Brooks. If you want to stash a player and you are a, a winning team, you have a, a spot on your bench, you can sit and wait on a guy. Robbie Anderson probably should be stashed at this point. <clears throat> we might finally be getting around to a time where he can be useful after a horrifically unfortunate situation was placed upon him with his own injury and then his quarterback smooching around getting that mononucleosis as far as we know Darnold is on track to play next week that's why Robbie Anderson is a stash I think Robbie is stashed in the majority of competitive Sh leagues so I, I, just, I agree with you that he he's dropped in a few though yeah so yeah no I I agree I think he I think he's going to be playable at some point in this season we just need to get through this yeah yeah uh, Bye week situation, and you know Chris Herndon's coming back as well. It could be a lot better right. for that offense soon. Running backs: Carlos Hyde, most likely owned, sixty-seven percent right now. Snap count wise, this past week, Duke Johnson saw more of the field. Do you, do you target Carlos Hyde if you're a running back hungry team and he's still out there? Yeah. Or would you rather? Have, I mean, Ronald Jones, Carlos there's, Hyde, or Adrian Peterson? There's Put those other, in order. Uh, of those. I'll go with Ronald Jones. Yeah. He would be my top one of those guys. Like, Carlos Hyde is fine if you need a – like, I really need someone to pick up and play, but there's other options that we're going to go through that I would prefer over Carlos Hyde. Yeah, if you, if, you have to, if you have to start a guy and you want someone cheap – I mean, the thing is, is like Carlos Hyde, it's interesting because he's 67% owned, but I feel like I should be able to get him super cheap. <laughs> like if he's on waivers, right. so I'm I'm certainly not spending up for Carlos Hyde. There are other guys that I I think are cheap and good options this week. Yeah, another likely owned, but possibly out there. Frank Gore, you know he's going to get consistent work. He may get even more with Josh Allen if he ends up on the shelf. It's not a great matchup against Tennessee, but sheer volume. And the way that this defense plays, you could have some short fields for you, Buffalo. You could. It's about Devin Singletary, though, where he, he did return to some practices last week. It looked like he might sneak in the game. He did not monitor Singletary's health. Cause that for, changes it a lot for you? It, Singletary, I don't think coming back off the injury is going to get a lot of work in week one. It, perhaps in week one. I'm just saying for the long term of Frank Gore. It, once Singletary is back and playing, Frank Gore will still get work, but he's going to He's going to be vultured in a few places. I think the player I'm most interested in terms of available, interesting, throwing the football a little bit. We made the joke about it. Yeah. But it's Jalen it Samuels. Jalen Samuels, yes. you know, 10 for 26 and a touchdown on the ground, ran the Wildcat, 8 for 57 through the air on eight targets. He passed the eye test. He looked like he was a valuable weapon in this newly assembled offense. And he got to throw the ball three times. So throw. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, tap, yeah, tap pass. Tap yeah. pass. That's funny, though, right? I mean, you, you do the tap pass, and you get the credit as the quarterback in that situation. So, so ridiculous. You need to exploit that as a fantasy football owner. And so I think Jalen Samuels is a must-add. Yes. Uh, Agreed. Samuels, to, to me, the two guys that I'm most interested out there are Samuels and – <laughs> Ronald Jones. <laughs> I had to get it out too, man. I know. It's, it's, really, it's really tough for it, me 
to believe in Ronald Jones. But now three of the four weeks, he's been great. Tampa Bay is clearly wanting to run the ball as much as they can do to protect Jameis Winston, which has helped Jameis Winston. Uh, they're the second most rushing attempts in the NFL, averaging 26 per game. So Ronald Jones has looked great. He's the snap leader. Uh, I don't know what happened in that bizarro week two where it was like, hey, Ronald, just watch from the sideline. Yeah. But that, that threw everything off. It, it maybe, it. My maybe guess it's hard is to it's, trust. My guess is it was a, a, a blitz pickup situation against Carolina that just got him benched. The last two weeks, number 19 at the running back position. This past week, number 17 at the running back position. And like you said, week one, he was 26. But he's he's establishing himself on an offense that Bruce Arians has had success running the football with, you know, and having fantasy running backs that are relevant. So the question is, would you rather have Ronald Jones, who seems to be more consistent, more volume, more work, running back 19, running back 17, or Jalen Samuels, who now in this new offense for only one week, but he was the running back nine. He was very utilized. If you have to make your waiver bid or your fab, which one would you go after first? I think that Ronald Jones, his his, uh, his track right now, the way that it is going, he seems like he is the safer ad to be getting that volume. But – I'm going to bet on the one week performance of James Conner had eight targets. Jalen Samuels had eight targets. Like, if I can get a running back who's seeing eight to 10 carries, but then five plus targets, I'll take that over the guy who's going to see 15 to 17 carries. So sure. I, I would, I side going with Jalen Samuels. And then I think perhaps the bonus me. that he plays Wildcat, they keep that going. I'm not sure. And he, he completes 100% of his passes. Yes. Yeah, when they're tap passes, that's going to be a really good accuracy rating. Other considerations at running back, you can pay attention to Jordan Wilkins. Yes. Uh, if if Marlon Mack misses the game, Jordan Wilkins would be the man to step in. I think he was out there for about 20% of snaps this past week. For this week, I would prefer Hines. Absolutely. Because they're taking on Kansas City. Naheem Hines is the receiving back, so that – I, it, you saw the recipe the last week. The Colts are good, but... Yeah, I mean, they played. They had, they had a negative game script all last yeah. week. Naeem Hines was on the field for 45% of snaps. So, uh, But you still weren't happy, right? Six for 39. On, on He caught all six of his targets. It, yeah, he's a PPR yards. play. He's a PPR play. Right, PPR only. Yeah. Full PPR. Yeah. Triple PPR. Oh, then I'm interested. PPPPR. A Hines only league. The Peter so Piper Ward, pizza Naeem PPR Hines. pick of the week. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's a throwback. Uh, Ito Smith, Daryl Williams, Rashad Penny. Penny likely to be active on Thursday night football. Any interest there? He is a stash for me. Yeah, I would sure. I would without a doubt be rostering him, but I don't think you can start him this week. I would I would no. pick him up. Um what about Daryl Williams? How, is do we have any inclination as to how long because Daryl Williams has now been very good for fantasy two weeks in a row. He's still, even though Shady was the starter, I mean, he outsnapped him. He he was utilized in in a in a large way. So I don't know the status of Damian Williams, but I think you can start Daryl Williams as a flex play until Damian Williams returns. So I think that's pretty much how my recipe. Since we don't know the status update of Damian Williams right now for this week. And today is the day where people are going to have to make the decision. Do they go grab Daryl Williams if they can't get one of these other guys? Would you want to stash him in hopes of of that? Yeah, I, I would happily do that. Yeah, I think Daryl Williams should be rostered, no doubt. Especially with, you know, last week 50-50 snap care count with Shady. Shady's had his injury problems, and you could end up in a situation where if Shady goes down, Daryl Williams is the guy for a few weeks on, a, right. on the best offense in football. Uh so. Also, another name to throw out there at running back. He's still, uh, he's still rostered in sixty three percent of leagues, but there are plenty of leagues out there where Tevin Coleman, because he was on bye and people needed to make a move and he was injured, has been dropped. They're past their bye week. They're as a team, the San Francisco Forty Nine ers have the most fantasy points at at the running back position. Tevin Coleman could slot in as the starter or as the goal line back or as both. I, I would definitely make a strong push to him if he's out there on your waivers. All right, tight end waivers. Let's look at some pickups that are, you know, 
should be on your radar. Chris Herndon comes back week six, so this is probably the time you need to go get him if you yeah. want him cheap. Uh, he's got one week left of suspension, in the, and they just got through the bye week, so he'll the, be back week six, and I think he's a very valuable uh, add for your fantasy team along with Ben Watson. Those would be the two players that are kind of – would you rather take Ben Watson because he is he's back. His four game suspension is over and that Patriots schedule once again Washington, the Giants, the Jets. No, no, I'd rather have Herndon. Okay. Um Herndon as a rookie last year showed a lot on the field. Not a lot of pass catching options in New York. Much better ceiling. You Bef know, maybe the New England Patriots decide to completely revise what's worked over the first four weeks because of the option of Watson, but it's been basically they've played without a tight end as a pass catching option through that time. And I, I just don't know what Ben Watson has left in the tank ceiling wise. Yeah. I, I completely agree with everything you're saying early in the off season before Darren, I am the walrus came into goo -goo our lives. Uh, oh. Oh, yeah. goo -goo there were two uh, tight ends. We were really interested in, right. it was Chris Herndon and Mark Andrews, two rookies yeah. that showed a lot, but then Herndon got suspended. That was out the window. And I don't think you're going to be able to get Herndon, for more money next week. I think in most leagues, this is the week where people pick up Hernan. So if you want him, if you're one of those teams that does not have, you just you haven't been able to find a, a solid tight end, I would definitely pick up Chris Hernan. If you want to stream a tight end, I genuinely believe you can stream Tyler Eifert this week. Five targets last night. Arizona can't cover tight ends. And if they're without John Ross, the arguments I right. made for Auden Tate as a one-week rental, apply to Tyler Eifert. He dropped a touchdown to start this game, and it was a great pass by Andy Dalton. He had it in between both hands. and he. And well, the it, problem was there was a defender there, so that won't be a problem this week. Right. That, that makes was it harder distracting. to catch. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you do have a potential one-week rental in Eifert. If you have somebody on by, maybe you lost TJ Hawkinson, both to the concussion and the bye week coming up. If you're a Gasicki owner and you've been just counting on Gasicki. Oh. <laughs> wow. Our apologies. <laughs> Let let us know if you are uh, if you you or someone you know has started Mike Gesicki ever. Oh. I want I want to be able to, you know, sure shame you, comfort you, oh, sure. <laughs> and then right behind those guys for me, it's the Walking Dead. He's back, Jimmy Graham. He had nine targets this past week, six for sixty one with a touchdown. He's and very relevant, and this is because Devontae Adams is hurt. Yeah, yes. you you can't just throw out we you know we talk about Geronimo Allison, MVS, yes. but a hundred percent, Mike, you're right. Jimmy Graham, if you need a start, I mean, he's probably a better pickup than most of these he's other better guys. Than Eifert. He's, he's probably better the number one. Than, he's better than Doyle. Uh, he's better than yes, absolutely. I think Jimmy Graham's the number one pickup this week if he's out there. He's owned in thirty six percent of leagues. You know, Jason Witten is kind of ho hum. You're probably not going to get goose with him. Dawson Knox, he saw he's, another interesting week. Three yes. for 58 on three targets. Uh, he's a rookie in he's, Buffalo and a move tight end. He's a guy to keep an eye on, but not a guy to pick up, roster, or start, in T my opinion. Tough with Tennessee in the bye week. Yeah, tough with Josh Allen's injury, too. Yeah. So, And then Noah Fantastic had his first NFL touchdown this past week, and that was about it. Just keep an eye on it. He ran the uh, eighth most routes at the tight end position. I think he's another guy you keep your eye on. There's kind of two categories of free agent tight ends in in general, which is the Jason Witten, Vernon Davis floor plays two for twenty five might be what you get, or there's the you shoot for the stars with you know somebody like Noah Fant or Dawson Knox, knowing you could full well get goosed, and I think it just depends on your team makeup. All right, let's uh, let's move into quarterbacks. Full stream ahead. Mike, who's your quarterback streamer of the week? So my quarterback streamer is a, he's a top 10 guy right now because he's throwing touchdowns at a very nice, very rapid rate. I'm going with Jacoby Brissett. He gets to take on the Chiefs. We really hope that T.Y. Hilton will be back this week. That would improve the odds that your streamer is going to hit. But I think you can rely on him. I, I think that Jacoby has shown that he is a capable quarterback and the multi-touchdowns every single week, it's hard to see that slowing down against the Kansas City Chiefs where they will have to score they to be in the game. Matthew Stafford had a very good fantasy week last he week did. despite being with a busted quote-unquote injured 
and the game script being positive for Detroit because Stanford took advantage of it early and they and they did a lot against Kansas City. I don't mind that at all. I'm going to go Jameis Winston. I like I it. love this. Against the New Orleans Saints prior to this week against Dallas where the Saints shut down Dak Prescott, only 9.9 fantasy points given up. Prior to that, the, the three quarterback scores against New Orleans, 49, which was Russell Wilson, 24, which was Goff, and then 39 again against uh, Deshaun Watson. So I think it's an opportunity for Winston. He's got two top five wide receivers right now. Do you guys realize that? Yeah. All the panic for Mike Evans. He's a top five fantasy wide receiver in total points scored. Godwin, depending on your scoring format, is two or three right now. And you still have weapons in O.J. Howard, and, and you've seen them – put up huge points over recent weeks he's a perfect streamer yeah and uh i i agree completely i would i would stream Jameis winston over either of these other guys are uh, you picking him up in our league of record mike he's on my list yeah i, yeah. I feel like you are i feel like you are mike he's, he's on my list i'll bet you 100 dollars that you can't hang from a bar for five minutes i will not accept your dang bet it. <laughs> dang it a, it's a good bet if you can get anyone to take it. Um, <laughs> no, my streamer of the week, prepare yourselves, brace yourselves, because this is fresh. I can't oh, believe come on. This. this. is fresh come off on. of last night and eight sacks and oh, come on. terrible Andy Dalton. He looked the worst. But here's the thing. We talked about this all week leading up to last night. We did not talk about Andy Dalton all week, I Jason. talked about primetime Dalton. Yeah being atrocious if he's on monday night football or thursday night football yes let's flush last week primetime dalton down the toilet because he was terrible the three weeks before that he was he was yeah, look he, he was, was on fine. pace for 5200 yards he need john touchdowns. ross to have some sort of hope again if, in this game well don't you love mr auden tate number one waiver wire pickup of Not the like week a dalton supporter all right, uh, go on. Tyler, Tyler Boyd, Eifert. Tyler Eifert yes. uh, against Arizona at home. This is an 0-4 team that's coming and playing against an 0-4 team. I think Andy Dalton has a fine fantasy week this week, and he is someone that you could stream even after such a bad performance. Look, he's had horrific performances in the past on primetime, and then they still stick with him. Okay, yeah. Arizona, I can't argue with facing Arizona. It really is a strong play and that probably goes on both sides but i think kyler probably has a pretty good game against the Bengals. lack of a defense that that i'm curious what the over on do we have that yet brooks what the over under early over under is on the arizona game i we wonder if that's it. in the 50s i'm curious what vegas thinks about those two defenses let's go ahead and uh you can look that up let's get into our defensive streamers Defense versus offense. Presented by Head and Shoulders and Walmart. I have those if you want them. Right? I saw it 47 and a half. Is that yeah. right? Yep. The Caesars book that's, has that's a 47. Nice. That's good. Yeah. That's like one. Cincinnati favored by three and a half. I think they'll hit the over. It's like one side of the, the Buccaneers Rams game. 47 and a half. But we'll see. We'll yep. see what happens. Andy Dalton, that's a that's a pretty good pretty good number. All right. Favorite team defense special team streaming options for week five. You can put those waiver wire claims in. Who do you got, Mike? I'm going with Tennessee versus Buffalo. This is a this is a perfect mixture of everything you want in a in a streamer where they're actually a really good defense. Tennessee is a they're a strong defense. Yes. Taking on an opponent. That, that gives up sacks and gives up turnovers in Buffalo, and that's if Josh Allen is the starter. They may be without their starting quarterback this week. So I love Tennessee. They're they're my number one streamer this week. Yeah, that that's great. I'm going to go, of course, with the Patriots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stream them, Jay. Stream them. Uh, if for some reason they're already <laughs> picked up in your league and they're not widely available on the waivers, I don't get it. Uh, but I'm going to take the other side of the ball. In the game Mike just talked about, I think Buffalo's defense is so legit. They just basically shut down the Patriots. The Patriots did not score that much, and some of what they scored was a pick six. Uh, oh, it was a punt block. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. It was a punt block returned for a touchdown on special teams. But Buffalo's defense has been so good. I don't think we're going to see Marcus Mariota balling out again with these crazy broken long plays, ran in for touchdowns against Buffalo's defense. 
if I had to pick one of these two, I'd probably do side on on the Tennessee side of the ball. But you're talking offense versus defense. I think these are two poor offenses against two great defenses. I'd slam the under. I think that some of the what points. What if the under's 20 points, Jason? Ooh, of course, man. he has the under right in front of him, so he can always no, tell I, us. I, let me pull it back up. <laughs> um, all right. I, I like that. Buffalo's defense is a legitimate Probably every week start type of defense after that performance against New England. <laughs> what is it? Is it? Wait, can I guess? Yes. 37 Four. and a half. You're 38 and a half. Okay. Okay. I'm going to go with a defense that I was shocked is available in 85% of leagues. Shocked. And that's Carolina. Carolina's defense is available in the majority of leagues. They're at home this week. They face Gardner Minshew. They have sacked the quarterback 14 times. In the past two weeks alone, eight against Kyler Murray, six against Deshaun Watson. They have three interceptions in that span. They are shutting people down. They're the fifth-ranked fantasy defense on the week, on the season, and this is just a recipe for success. Jacksonville, Gardner Minshew, the plays he did make last week, which were you know few and far between but enough, they all involved six or seven broken tackles escaping terrible pressure in the pocket. I think that Carolina is a shoe in for five sacks in this game, so they make for a very, very strong streaming defensive option. I concur. All right, head and shoulders, offense for your hair, defense for a flake-free scalp. Check it out on walmart.com or at your local Walmart. Now, Mike, should I ask why you were smirking over there? Were you just looking at some of the over-unders? Uh, uh, no, just, just having funny thoughts. Just having funny thoughts. Yes, I feel like I need to re-bet you on this one. You think I can Which, hit the hang? Do you think I could hit three minutes? No. Oh, oh! Me neither. That's it for today's <laughs> show. <laughs> uh, appreciate you, Foot Clan. We'll be back tomorrow. Get those waiver claims in tonight. Yes. Get it right. Get it tight. See you next time. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.